Hello everyone, and welcome back to another session of Bloodborne PvP and another weapon showcase. Today we're going to take a look at the Rifle Spear. Now this is a weapon, at first I honestly did not care for it, I didn't enjoy this thing at all, and I felt that it was very underwhelming. And then it started to warm up to me. I started to warm up to it, rather. And what really caused that is my dexterity, or rather my skill build playthrough. I picked up this weapon, and I figured, well, you know, it's got a fair skill scaling, I'll give it a shot. And I discovered that what really makes this weapon shine is its charged R2 attacks. They are just truly fantastic and life-saving for PvE, in all honesty, they really are. In PvP, they can be quite damaging, they're very difficult to hit with, and very worthwhile to hit with, as a matter of fact. But more on that later on. For now, getting started, the Rifle Spear requires 10 Strength, 11 Skill, and 9 Blood Tinge. It has a B Scaling in Strength, a B Scaling in Skill, a B Scaling in Blood Tinge, and a C in Arcane, which of course is not useful at all until you make this weapon scaling with an elemental type. So there's that. Now for this video, I am using two 18% Blood Gems and a 19%, and my damage as such is roughly, or rather my attack rating as such, is roughly 420. I believe it's 425. Now, the physical base damage of the weapon is 170. The blood base damage of the weapon is also 170. And that pretty much sums up all the basics for this weapon. Now, as I was saying, the biggest thing for this weapon is the charged R2 attacks and how fantastic they are for PvP and for PvE. Mostly PvE, in all honesty, because they are, as I said, quite difficult to land in a PvP situation. But for PvE, if you're trying to sneak up on an enemy from behind and set up a backstab, you can get them from a good distance away, just charge your R2 attack, and you'll fly at them across right to them and hit them in the back, set them up perfectly, and deal a significant amount of damage with that attack as well. So that's something you definitely want to keep in mind if you're planning to use this weapon for PvE. Now, as far as PvP is concerned, you really need to bait someone in very, very hard to get them with that R2 attack. I believe in one of these fights I do end up getting it. I got one with a fully charged and one with a partially charged R2. So, it is possible to do despite being very difficult, although I believe I hit 780 with that fully charged one. So, it really goes to show you it's very worthwhile if you can pull it off. Now, other pros of this weapon that are worth mentioning, you can actually bait people into a uh, disruption with your gun very easily. Now, what I do to do this personally is I bait with the two-handed, or rather your secondary form, transform attack into the first form, and then following up that with a gunshot. So essentially what you do is you swing the spear horizontally across and then immediately just press the button to shoot the gun. People will run into that and try and attack you because they think you're exposed and it works very, very reliably. So I'd recommend trying that. Now about that secondary form, it has wider sweeps, which is a very good thing. Issue is they are kind of slow and as such can be difficult to hit someone with. Now, that being said, the wider sweeps are very useful because your, for your first form is very linear, and by very linear I mean exclusively linear. You don't have any sweeping attacks. And as good as that is if you're in a narrow corridor or something like that, most of this game is not spent in narrow corridors. And if you're doing PvP, well, chances are the person's not going to want to fight you in a narrow corridor and they'll run somewhere more open. So, as such, there's a time and a place for your secondary form, definitely keep it in mind. And another good thing about the secondary form is you can actually shoot with it. Your L2 becomes your gun when you're in your secondary form, it's exactly how it would be if you were using a gun normally, which is pretty cool. I like that aspect about this weapon. You've got your R2 attacks, you've got your R1 attacks, and you can still shoot, and that makes it very, very nice. And related to still shooting, you can backstep and do an L2. It's essentially backstep parrying from Dark Souls 2. It works very well and very easily. It's another good way to bait someone in, so there's that as well. So, other pros, uh, your dashing attacks. Of course, dashing attacks are very fast. The nice thing about dashing attacks with this weapon is that they cover a lot of distance very quickly. You have a spear. You take advantage of it with your dashing attacks. It's very, very useful and very, very nice. 
Also, don't forget about your dashing R2s. They are an overhead swing as opposed to a horizontal one. It can be very, very good to do. It can be quite damaging if you land them, and I would recommend it. Other than that, I mean, it's a long weapon, obviously, and that can make it difficult to get away from if the person is moving backwards and trying to get away from you in a linear sort of fashion, in a linear plane. So, if you're, fi if you're fighting against this thing, dodge sideways, not backwards. That's really the best way to handle it. And that's all I've got for the pros of the weapon. Now, for the cons of the weapon. The tracking of this weapon when you're in either of its forms is pretty bad. It's slow. The tracking is slow, and that can lead you to missing a lot of attacks if you start to R1 spam. It's less friendly than other weapons in that respect. As such, though, it means it requires a tad bit more skill to use, and I personally enjoy it a bit more because of that. Other cons, the R1 spam with this weapon, no matter what form you're in, is a lot slower than other weapons as well. So that's something you also need to watch out for. It makes it so you have to time your attacks well, and I do like that aspect about it, but I can see how a lot of people would find that unappealing, considering this game is, at the moment, very reliant on R1 spam and fast weapons. So there's that as a con as well. And finally, the last con that I've got for this weapon would be something related to its dashing attacks. I mentioned earlier how they're such good pros. Well, if you think about it, a lot of dashing attacks with other weapons, you can dash in and just spam R1. It doesn't exactly work with this weapon very well. You dash in, you hit R1, get your dashing attack, and that's great, because that covers a lot of distance and is very likely to hit your opponent. You go for your second R1, and typically that second one will miss due to hitboxes and distancing and the fact that at that point you're pretty much on top of your opponent and you're swinging past them. So... Other weapons can dash in and R1 spam more easily, making the weapon, making this weapon less user-friendly and other ones more. So, it's what it is. It's really not the best weapon in the game at all, by any stretch of the imagination. But, I enjoy this thing a lot. I had a really good time with it. I would really recommend trying it out if you had not. And that's all I've got to say about this thing. So, I hope you guys liked and enjoyed the video, found it helpful in one way or another. Please like, subscribe, and all of that good stuff, and I will see you all in the next video.